we have another picture which is very similar in appearance to the last one that we showed you, but this one is again plastic, being formulated into this shape and form by a cymatic frequency. Except that here we have, if you notice, there are five areas within it instead of four. But the same action is taking place, an enfolding movement from the outer rim to the inner points, from the outer rim to the inner points. In other words, like a living, evolving mass. But it owes its life wholly and solely to the vibration or the frequency field that's being fed into it and nothing else. Here we have a very highly magnified picture of the uh, forefinger of a newborn child showing the sort of cell development that is in, uh, on, the, on the skin surface. This is lycopodium dust vibrating at a similar frequency, formulating itself up into again these small center points, almost a replica of the cell formation of the child's fingers. Now, as you can see by the slides that you have seen, we can reproduce the most fantastic shapes and forms. We can almost duplicate parts of the human anatomy and structure, merely by putting the correct frequency into place and utilizing it. These things can be reproduced as many times as we want. Again and again, we can reproduce them and watch them almost like living shapes, living forms, living amoeba. But they owe their life wholly and solely to sound. And perhaps we do too. Some of those slides were quite astounding, especially the ones that we saw where the sound formation was almost exactly duplicate of the cellular formation. There's also a film that you have um, made with Dr. Hans Jenny uh, on this material, is it not uh, true? That's correct. I think if you see the actual film on it, it gives you um, a better concept and a better idea of how these shapes and forms can move. In some parts of the film, it looks almost as if it's a, uh, a living, moving amoeba that's uh, existing there. Um, but all, all of it owes its life wholly, solely, and simply to sound. You mm. stop the sound and everything stops. You turn on the sound and everything becomes alive. It looks like living shape and form. Mm. Wasn't there something in the Bible? In the beginning was the word? I'm talking about the word maybe meaning sound or something like oh, that? Oh, yes, we love to use that one. In the beginning uh, was the word, and the word was God. Well, I, I read this many times as a child, and it didn't make much sense to me. I quite admit it was interesting, but it didn't have much sense. But what we didn't realize, and we didn't realize until comparatively uh, recently, is that within this we have a scientific formula so if we turn it into the modern idiom, into the great voids of space, sound cause matter to take shape, because it's basically what it does. You can take any uh, matter what you like, whether it's a liquid, whether it's oil, whether it's dust, whether it's sand, whatever it is, and you can form it into the most intricate and fascinating designs and patterns and shapes and forms. But you see, uh, most of this work, the basic work, we have followed it up, it's true, was done by Dr. Hans Jenny. Um, but this, medically speaking, was not what we wanted. What we needed um, was uh, a harmonic that would form the, not into a flat shape. You see, it's, it, most of these are flat shapes on the plate. We wanted something that would form into a three-dimensional form and shape, mm -hmm. something that would defy gravity, if you like, in which we had injected 
uh, levitation. Well, when I first went into the laboratory and asked my technician if he could formulate some way in which we could create levitation, he thought I'd gone start raving mad and said, well, that's impossible. But anyhow, we, from single frequencies, we tried two frequencies, three frequencies, four frequencies, and the patterns become more intriguing, they became different, they become um, if I may dare use this word, may become almost ethereal because they mm. become very fine and delicate. But it still wasn't what we were after. And we were almost at the point of giving up. And we said, well, we'll, let, we'll try one more, we'll try five. And when we tried five frequencies, oh, we nearly jumped up in the air because it actually happened. The uh, stuff that we had on the plate literally blew off the plate. So um, what we did then was to put a plastic, which we thought we could bind and hold together, and we put this plastic on the plate, and sure enough, it formed itself up into a, a form defying the pull of gravity and started to form up into a holistic form and shape, three-dimensional. This is what we needed, this is what we wanted, because this is the basic sort of formulative structure of shape and form in the human body. Mm. So we were really onto something. Mm, so in a way, then, the sound creates the form. The sound will create the form and will hold it for just as long as you want it to hold. But if you change that frequency, then it will, if you want to use a word, it will, you will have mutation. Mm -hmm. You will change the shape. So therefore, it is again correct to say, scientific fact, that as the sound, so the shape and the form. So there basically we conclude from that that the human body in the form in which we see it is held in that formulative pattern and structure wholly and solely by the sound it contains and makes. Mm -hmm. Peter, could you tell us a little bit about the use of cymatic therapy in hospitals and other clinical settings? Is it being used in hospitals today? Oh yes, most certainly. Uh, mostly into the... Um, uh, smaller consulting rooms, it's, it seems to be more an individual thing uh, rather than a collective thing in some of the large hospitals. But in the smaller establishments, in consulting rooms and clinics, it's proved absolutely invaluable. So many of the conditions, especially simple things like, uh, uh, once I say simple to the practitioner but difficult to the person who's receiving it, and that is slip disc, which can be horribly painful can keep people away from their work or their offices or their employment for sometimes weeks on end. There's very little that can be done about it except tell them to rest and that's about it and give them a pain mm -hmm. killer. Well, now with the aid of cymatics, all this can change. We can alter all this. Uh, with the application of, of cymatic therapy for approximately 10 to 15 minutes, the pain will ease down considerably. And invariably, when the tension is moved out of the surrounding area and tissue, very often, uh, without manipulation, it will slip back in place. But even if a manipulation has to take place, it can be done easily and simply. Therefore, the uh, older technique of osteopathic manipulation, which has been the, shall I say, the arguing point between the medical profession and the osteopaths, especially in the UK for so long, is now overcome. Uh, no longer do we have to, uh, what we term, a cold manipulation. In other words, force it back into position, because once you've used cymatic on, the whole area relaxes, eases, and it will be comfortably back in position. Now, there are many other things that uh, we can ease and relieve pain uh, without the administering of drugs and painkillers. Uh, it has been found and checked by specialists in London who are using this instrument that the endophorins, which are the secretion from the brain, which ease off pain, it's like nature's uh, painkiller, is activated by the transmission of frequencies into the structure. We have used this in <coughs> hospitals where um, patients have been injured in mining disasters where the roof has crashed in. Now, we all know medically there's very little we can do from this or except to clean it up, make them comfortable, uh, and give them a painkiller if necessary, and just hope that time will heal it. 
Well, now we can do much more than that because for applying this frequency above the damaged area, we can uh, deaden down to a large extent the pain and there is no side effects as if we have given drugs to administer it. Have you uh, tried this in the situations of uh, cancer, for instance? Well, now, cancer is something which the, uh, unless you are an MD, uh, you are not allowed to treat. Uh, we, we've got to remember that these instruments are in the hands of osteopaths, chiropractors, um, nurses, nurse consultants, all these kind of people who are efficient uh, practitioners within their own rights, and they are using these instruments. Now, with this instrument, they are not breaking the law in any way, shape, or form, because we do not deal with cancer to obliterate it. We do not attempt to disintegrate the cancer. We treat the organ to which it is being troublesome. In other words, if it's a lung cancer, we treat the lung. We strengthen and fortify the lung and let the cancer take care of itself, and invariably, this does happen. Dr. Manners, I know you brought your cymatic instrument uh, here from England. Do you think you can show us how it works? Yes, we can do that. That presents no problem now. In its early stages, of course, it was a vast instrument, which was very clumsy, very difficult, and couldn't be moved. Now it is transportable, uh, it's no larger than a large attache case, and we can utilize it in homes, um, or hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, consulting rooms. It can be carried by the practitioner or the doctor wherever you would like to use it. Ah, splendid, splendid. We have Priscilla King, a nurse consultant here who has uh, volunteered to act as a patient in this situation. Uh, I guess she'll take a little time off from her nursing as nursing patients to help and act as a patient. So why don't we bring Priscilla up here and she will uh, be happy to let you work on her with your somatic instrument. Um, yes, we'd be most happy to do this, um, but at this point we must add that um, we shall only be able to use the applicator unit for this form of treatment. Uh, there is another form of treatment which is applied from the same instrument which has become known as biosomatics. Now biosomatics is using silent sound. There is no sound whatsoever. You are using the basic energy out of the sound, but in order to use this, you need the patient definitely in the clinic because a saline solution and pads have to be used for its application. Um, if I might uh, explain how this functions, um, if a patient uh, has, um, or should I say, normal mobility in arms and legs, very often if they hear music or a beat in music, they will beat in time with it, either with a hand or with a foot. It's a very common occurrence. It's a very complicated thing if you run through all the procedures of it, but it's quite easy to do. But if there is paralysis or anything of that type within either the arm or the leg, the uh, uh, limb will not do it. Now, it won't do it because the left hemisphere of the brain is closed down on the synapse and it can't actually function it. But the, all the muscles may be correct, the nerves may be all right, joints, bones, everything is in order, but the synapse of the brain doesn't function the limb. Now, if we reverse the process of the cymatic input and put the input in through the hand and the arm, we can then reestablish a movement in that arm and we can get the arm to beat in a normal, natural way. But that's not the end of the story. We can do that, and we've been able to do this for quite a number of years. Or it exercises the muscles, and it's very good, and it's quite interesting to the patient to be able to see a paralyzed arm moving and beating time. But that is not basically what we want. What we want is the synapse within the brain, the brain to start to activate this uh, movement. Now, previously, it was extremely difficult to, shall we say, go into another dimension of healing uh, with the ordinary medical profession. But of course, we're in more enlightened times now, and we can do this. So what we tell the patient is to close their eyes, to visualize on the paralyzed limb, see it in their mind or their mind's eye, and then as the impulse travels into the limb, to mentally lift at the same time. If they do this, 
then the synapse will start to function and we can get movement back into the tissue and the structure again. Sorry we won't be able to see that aspect of the uh, instrument being utilized, but I'm sure we will have an extraordinary experience watching this. The instrument is so designed to make it as simple for operation as we possibly can. On this side of the instrument is a sonic computer which will formulate the basic frequencies that you require for treatment. This can be then locked into the mind of it, transferred and recorded to a magnetic tape, and it is then ready when you plug in your applicator on this side to apply to the patient. And the way we apply it to the patient is merely to switch it on and turn up the amount of output on the applicator. The applicator is then applied to the patient, but before it is applied to the patient, it's always advisable, remember we are interested in holistic medicine, and the patient is an individual, not a case. The patient is very often apprehensive, tense, perhaps tired, and in pain. And we firmly believe that an application of your hand over the area first, before any treatment is given, has a soothing effect, beneficial effect and the patient feels more confident. Then apply the frequency field. Now the frequency field that you're applying immediately is applied, the patient will relax automatically. As you're coming to the patient, they're a little apprehensive. Once it is applied, they are perfectly content, easy and relaxed. Because the frequency you're filling in filling in is entirely in relation to the natural frequency there. You are using a natural frequency, there is nothing injurious, nothing harmful, nothing will do any harm at all. In this particular case, our nurse here has many serious problems, but had she had serious problems and this joint was unmovable, a, a small application around the joint structure would ease down the tension and after a few manipulations by the applicator, you would be able to gently move the joint without pain or discomfort. Up in the area here, which is always an area of congestion, pain and discomfort, remember this is a very important area of the body because your eyes are controlled from here, the organ of balance is controlled from here, the facial muscles are controlled from here, and also the nerve going down the arm is all controlled from this area. It's a place where tension builds considerably. So therefore, by, by applying this over the area, you get a relaxed and comfortable feeling. Once the applicator is in contact with the patient, you have no further need to comfort or to reassure them. And it matters little whether it is a young baby, a small child, or whether it's an elderly patient, all of them relax, and it's easy, pleasant, and comfortable. The frequency field that you are actually hearing is the sound which exists within muscle structure. That sound that you can hear is the actual sound that is contained within the muscle structure amplified many, many thousands of times. And therefore, all that is necessary is to apply it over the area for ease, comfort, and relaxation. If they have come in and complained to you that there is pain in that shoulder and it's possibly rheumatism, they've not told you anything else perhaps, and you are treating this, they will very often say, Doctor, I can feel something happening down in my knee. Now the reason for this being that there's possibly a slight rheumatic condition in the knee joint, which they haven't necessarily told you about, but because the frequency field is traveling into the system, the whole system is consumed with it all the way around, and it will find any weakness anywhere in the body and deal with it as you're dealing with this area here. After you've done that for a little, if you are an osteopath or an orthopedic surgeon, then you can start to move. The area will move easily. It will relax. If you're going to move the arm joint, you'll find that you'll be able to move it easily 
and simply, and you will find the muscles will relax. Right, how does that feel? Very good. As you put that on me, I felt my whole body start to just relax. You can feel it across all around the body. Yes. That's right, yes, because it's transmitting into the whole of the structure of the body, you see. Now that you have got the somatic instrument pretty well developed, you've had it for a number of years now and have been using it successfully, what are you doing now in terms of new frontiers of using sound? Oh, you? quite a lot, a considerable amount. Um, the instrument itself is fully developed, it's uh, scientifically acceptable, it's medically approved, and we now have these instruments literally all over the world in use. Uh, particularly in the third world countries where we're able to train people efficiently and quickly uh, to use the instrument. But our research field at the present moment is um, stepping now into light therapy, which is becoming known as chromatology. Um, it was always previously thought that uh, the effect of colored lights, as they termed it, was a kind of gimmick. Uh, in which you sat under a pretty light and it was very comfortable and it was very nice and very warm and very relaxing. Well, I'm afraid all that is now completely changed. We do know that light penetration can penetrate through the pores of the skin, it can affect the bloodstream, it can affect internal organs, it can do a considerable amount. We advocated uh, many years ago that uh, babies born with the bellorubin, which is yellow jaundice, uh, should be treated instead of blood transfusions and drugs, should be treated under blue radiation. Um, this was very suspect for a long, long time until one doctor in the United States tried it, used it, found it successful, and now this technique of uh, treating bellorubin is used all over the world now. So you're working with color, what else? We're working with color, but we're also working with the action of the brain. We find that if we use these frequency fields, we can affect the left and right hemisphere of the brain. And we feel that very often a condition which causes paralysis or a problem in the human anatomy and structure has its seat in the left side of the brain. If we could only stimulate the right to sort of assist, take over, or form a bridge between the two, we could overcome a lot of problems. Well, now with uh, the advent of sound in a new dimension, we're able to do just this. And our research now is into using headphones which feed different frequencies into the structure and the system, also applied at the same time as light radiations and cymatic frequencies, we're able to activate all the cell tissues and nerve ganglia within the body and we're getting very, very good results. And it won't be long before we are able to discuss this and uh, explain these details to you. Wonderful. I look forward to hearing about those at a further date. But if people are interested in trying to find out more about cymatic therapy, Peter, how do they reach you? If they write to us, uh, Dr. Manners, uh, the Brett Fortin, B-R-E-T-F-O-R-T-O-N, Brett Fortin Hall, H-A-L-L, -L, Clinic, Brett Fortin, Vale of Evesham, E-V-E-S-H-A-M, Vale of Evesham, Worcestershire, England, we will attempt to answer every letter, if I possibly can, personally. And this is also how they would get a cymatic instrument or information on the cymatic instrument, of course. We also train students at our clinic uh, so that we can qualify them in the use of cymatic therapy. And in the United States, those of you who would like to contact me regarding various uses of sound and music for well-being, Shah. The Sound Hills Association may be reached by writing Post Office Box 2240, Boulder, Colorado, 80306. We continue to work with Dr. Manners, and we are very, very grateful for having had him here tonight. We hope that the information which we've disseminated has been of use. We thank you, Dr. Manners, so thank very much. Thank you, Johnson. I thoroughly enjoyed being here. It's a pleasure here, too. Thank you.
What we see here is the effect of vibration on a specific substance, lycopodium powder, or spores of the club moss. We have strewn it uniformly on a diaphragm of stretched paper with a diameter of about 30 centimeters, which we now excite by vibration. This causes the powder to clump. We can see many small clumps, many small globular piles, and the more intense the vibration, the more piles there are. If the note is louder, that is to say, if the amplitude is increased, these masses of powder move to the center and make a kind of dust cloud there. An ever wider area of powder is affected and more and more of these globules are formed. They are not at rest, but in a state of continuous motion. We can see a large circular shape forming in the middle and continuously moving. Sometimes it is whipped up into a cloud, as it is now, and sometimes it reverts to the solid dust particle form. These changes are caused by the differences in the intensity of the tone, that is, by the different amplitudes. In this experiment, the frequency, that is to say the number of vibrations per second, is the same. And now we see the circular form and everything in a definite pattern of movement. Now we shall take a closer look at these movements. Here is one of these forms. We can see how the material rises up in the middle and is transported to the periphery. This pile of dust, this heap of particles, is in a process of convection. The material travels inwards from the edge along the bottom of the pile, rises up in the middle and is then carried back to the periphery. Even if the intensity of the vibration changes, there is still a whole system of radial circulation. At certain frequencies, or with certain tones, an extraordinarily interesting phenomenon is seen. Watch we see two regularly and continuously rotating areas at either end of a diameter, going round and round like weathercocks. This is the expression of a rotating wave motion. We can see they are rotating in an anti-clockwise direction. We now switch to a different frequency and produce the same phenomenon, but this time in a clockwise direction, because the frequency is different. If we go back to the previous frequency, we have the same phenomenon again in an anti-clockwise direction. Notice that this rotary movement does not affect the circulation or convection in the least. Now we can excite the same material with different tones all the way through the frequency band and watch what happens. Here we have lycopodium powder at a relatively soft sounding tone and we see that the pattern figures most prominently. 
we have motion too and circulation, but above all, it is the structural pattern that strikes the eye. And all the shapes lying about here, looking like monkey nuts, have these patterns of structure. Again and again, there are convection cells, circulatory systems, forming there, making structural patterns in the lycopodium. Now, by changing the amplitude, that is, changing the volume of the tone, we can bring about a very interesting phenomenon. The tone is the same, but we introduce a burst, an amplitude burst, and every time we do so, it integrates the whole situation. events now lead to a phenomenon of exceptional interest. You must realize that the same diaphragm and the same powder are used, but that the tones are different. Here we have a flow pattern. This means that where we had a structural pattern before, we now have a violent dynamic one. A current is formed and the powder rushes along in the flow path, leaving the black patches of the diaphragm completely free of powder. Everything is driven into the flow path by the vibration. We add more and more material. But the result is not confusion or chaos. Instead, everything falls into place in the strict flow pattern. A point to notice about all these phenomena is that they can be reproduced at any time, that the factors and conditions of the experiment are known with accuracy. We go on throwing in powder, and every time this attractive and clearly defined flow pattern keeps on emerging from the vibrational field. It is a circulatory system without walls. The walls are, so to speak, the area of vibration. The area of vibration provides the constraint which gives shape to the circulatory flow. Different flow patterns are formed at different frequencies. is a kind of double current. 
but at other frequencies we have, as it were, a four-part or quadrantal pattern. Here we have a formation with four fields. Here again we throw in powder and once more it is embodied in the exact quadrantal flow pattern created by the vibration. is a particularly interesting phenomenon because it reveals not only the structuralizing effect of vibration but also its dynamic and kinetic effect. Here we have a cloud of lycopodium powder created by vibration and in it we can see extraordinary life and movement. We have eddy formations and sometimes even regular pairs of vortices. Then we have turbulences or unstable wave formations. And the interesting thing is that during all this welter of movement we have a structuralizing element on the diaphragm. At the very same time there is this zebra pattern on the diaphragm. Its one pole is structure and its other pole dynamics. Even if we intensify the vibrations and make a very thick cloud, this pattern still takes shape on the diaphragm. As we slowly reduce the tone, which is a decrescendo to the ear, the pattern created comes into view. In the vibrational fields of this lycopodium and of other materials, we saw time and again that in certain places the material is thrown up, then all is quiet, then it is thrown up once more, then all is quiet again. We saw that it kept to certain places, that it did not splash about just anyhow, but that everything took place in particular spots. In this shot we can see how there is one place on the diaphragm in the middle of our picture where the material keeps on being thrown up. And observation has shown that what we have here is an interference phenomenon. The action of the waves is cumulative, their effects are summated at these spots causing the mass to be ejected. Then quiet returns. Then there is another summation. These events are reminiscent of processes in solar physics in which a tendency to repetitive eruptions, solar eruptions, has been observed. This repetitive tendency is particularly prominent in the chromosphere. Here, interferences are at work. Here, we can watch what these hemispheres are doing. There are many different things to see. Structure, for instance, which we have observed before, and which appears on these circular forms as patches. Convection, which we have also observed before, can be seen here too. But what is particularly interesting about these hemispheres is the curious way they move. They creep round. They do not disintegrate. They do not break up or crumble. And as they creep round, they take everything with them. When movement takes place in one direction, what happens is that all the material 
slips and glides along together. These small circular forms move like amoebae, but only like amoebae. They are not living systems. They move like amoebae, or, to borrow a term from biology, they move correlatively. These are movements of correlation. That is to say, the movement always takes place as a whole. Also, we see how these small formations unite, combine, and separate. In this way, we realize there is always a whole. We always have something entire and complete before us. This is a particularly interesting phenomenon. We are able to discover it by using crystal oscillators. There are rotary processes, circular movements, which proceed with absolute regularity. Centrifugal force is not a factor here. The whole pattern is elicited by continuous parallel waves. see the currents running in contrary directions and creating a rotary effect or revolution. Here there is something very interesting to watch. Once again we have interference. That is to say there are two tones. One moment the waves summate, then they cancel each other out. They summate again and every time they summate, we have dynamics. And when they cancel each other out, we have rest and structural pattern. We see structure alternating continually with dynamics. Structure and dynamics. What we see then is not caused by switching the vibration on and off, but is itself a vibrational phenomenon. Structures appear, clouds are formed, there is movement and change, forms emerge, all as the result of interference. Squads of forms appear, unite again, separate again, but always there is wholeness. It is as if these vibrational fields were providing models for a holistic theory. Here again we have continuous waves. These are very large diaphragms, rubber diaphragms, more than a square meter in size. Whole squads stream along in one direction, others in another direction. Structural patterns appear, structural patterns unite. We are looking into a whole landscape of lycopodium created by vibration. of continuous waves. And we can see how, in certain places, there is an inward flowing current, and in other places, there is also an inward flowing current from the other direction. 
So we have, as it were, rivers of material flowing in from diametrically opposite directions. And they are then revealed in these regions of rotation. The points of inflow are diametrically opposed in these rotating areas. Here we can see very clearly how the material flows in at bottom left and top right at diametrically opposite points and in this way is incorporated into the rotary process. Here again there are currents, parallel continuous waves moving in opposite directions which carry powder along with them. This last experiment is really extraordinarily interesting. We are looking into a funnel. We apply vibration and the material is brought out of the bottom of the funnel. It is transported upwards against the force of gravity. But it is not simply thrown out. It moves round the periphery of the diaphragm, round its circumference, and then goes down into the funnel again. If we intensify the tone, then the upward march of the material is preponderant. If we make the tone soft, the material slides down again because the static friction on the undersurface of the diaphragm is reduced. The adhesion is reduced and, consequently, the powder slides down again when the vibration is less intense. Sometimes then we have a process in which the material moves out and sometimes a process in which it slips back. When it slips back it covers the whole cone. When it slips out it climbs up the wall of the cone. So on the one hand we have an anti-gravitation effect and, on the other, a sliding effect resulting from reduced adhesion. When the vibration is of a particular character, we have a process in which the material is transported out and, at the same time, slips back, so that there is a convection current on a grand scale. This is a detail from part of the edge. It is a complex phenomenon, but all in all, its organization is unitary. Anti-gravitation, a downward slide due to reduced adhesion, and convection of the whole mass of powder. Here, we see a heated and therefore liquid blob of kaolin excited by vibration. In this experiment we can follow how the phase of the material changes as it cools. First of all we have wave fields. We can watch the liquid substance rippling. Gradually it cools and the liquid phase 
changes to the plastic. And from the plastic phase, it proceeds to the solid phase. And we can therefore speak of solidification under the influence of vibration. Here, the plastic state has been reached. There are no longer waves, but a clumped mass which is rotating and circulating in itself. The substance gets harder and harder and more and more solid until, when it has cooled, the kaolin is completely rigid. All these forms, all these structures which we see here, have been created purely and simply because the substance has solidified under the influence of vibration. We see branched and ramifying patterns. These are not crystallized forms, but sculptural shapes resulting from vibration. We can call them dendritic structures, finally passing over into filigree. What is involved then is a change of phase under the influence of vibration, solidification, that is, as an effect of vibration. We have another picture which is very similar in appearance to the last one that we showed you, but this one is again plastic, being formulated into this shape and form by a cymatic frequency. Except that here we have, if you notice, there are five areas within it instead of four. But the same action is taking place, an enfolding movement from the outer rim to the inner points from the outer rim to the inner points. In other words, like a living, evolving mass. But it owes its life wholly and solely to the vibration